Uh, hi everyone, welcome back to Katarina's Garage. My name is Katarina Lloyd and actually I am here at the uh, Swamp Beat um, here in Stony Plain. Um, I was just inside and honestly it's going to be very difficult to film in there. So maybe I'll just film the stuff out in the parking lot. Because like there is some really cool stuff here that is for sale out here in the parking lot as well. Like uh, full cars and stuff like that. <laughs> Mostly. And like and there's some really cool vehicles just lying about. So yeah, anyways. Let's see what we can find out here. Because I'm already eyeing up. There is a 73 Plymouth Scamp. It's right there, right? Now, the Plymouth Scamp was a uh, Plymouth version of the Dodge Dart. Um, you know what? You don't you don't see the Scamps very often, to be honest. Like, because uh, the one thing is, at the time... Well, when Plymouth was introduced, they were actually the lower echelon of uh, the Chrysler division. However... Towards the end of Plymouth, or at least at, at, at this time, they seem to be almost higher up. And you know, this one does have a little bit of rust there or whatever else, but, uh, you know, very, very cool. Um, you know, missing the grill, but this was, a, uh, if you look at the information here, was a V8 car. So it would have been uh, probably a 318, maybe a, uh, maybe a 340, possibly a 360 being this late. But uh, overall, it's very cool. Again, missing a lot of stuff, but overall it's not bad at all, to be honest. And really, for rust, it's pretty clean. You know what? Like, you can take a look inside, and again, it's just gutted in here, but look at the floors, and like, the floors look good too. Like, this is a very nice base for somebody, you know, to build off of. Um, Because, yeah, like, and you don't see these very often. They're, they're just super cool. And I've always liked these uh, post scamps and uh, dodge darts. Now the thing is, the scamp does have a unique grill to it. Unfortunately, it's not here, but because uh, then I'd I'd uh, show you guys. But you know, uh, compared to the darts, however, like the tail lights are usually about the same, very similar, anyways. Um, but yeah, it's just overall very, very cool to see that. Now something else is really cool. I saw this pulling in. This is a Sport Fury. Now this one I don't think is for sale, but it's just you know cool cars out in the parking lot, right? This is a Sport Fury convertible. Uh, oh, it is for sale. Okay, so I, it's it's cool that I film this more. So this thing, like I said, I saw it drive in. Um, this is about, what, 68 or so? Um, Sport Fury. Now, these were the full size, I believe. Were they full size or maybe? Was this a C body? Yeah, I think it was a C body, which was uh, Chrysler's full size platform. And just very, very cool. Honestly, I love the body lines of these and whatever else. And a neat little uh, feature that these things have too. The uh, turn signals up here, which um, just to let you know, hey, your turn signals are on, right? If it's not working on the dash. Um, if you want, there's the guy's phone number. And this thing's in very good shape overall. Like, you know, even looking inside, which you can't really see too much in there, but black vinyl by the looks of it, automatic, console shift. Very cool, which I think the, the console shift was reserved for the Sport Fury, because otherwise it would have been on the column. So that'd be a, depending on what motor's under the hood, either a, um, sorry, I'm a little tired and my brain isn't working properly, but that would either be the 904 or the 727 training. Probably 727 is my guess due to the full size of the car, but I'm not too sure. Anyways, let's just continue on. That's something else I just found in the parking lot here. I actually saw this when I walked in. This is a 69 Dodge. I don't know if it's a D100, maybe a D200. It's probably a D100, judging by that it's a short box. Because um, it's very rare to find one that isn't. You know, this thing has some sweet Mickey Thompson uh, straight legal slicks on the back of it. I absolutely love the, uh, the they call this the, I think, the scatback stripe? Or maybe it's the bumblebee stripe. I can't remember what they call that, for sure. But overall, really, really cool. And you just don't see these and like, you know, you see some of this RT badging, whatever else, but that's because, well, if you look, okay, it's got the slicks. It's got a fuel cell back here with the cool, actually, they uh, did the Mopar fuel door, which, I mean, they ripped off of like boat guys, but hey, it works. It's cool. Um, you know what? Very, very neat. And like, and the one thing is, you know, the styling on these was a little polarizing at the time, but uh, you know, you see that and it says Hemi. That's because under the hood. There's a big old Hemi in there. With the dual quads. That is awesome. Yeah, this thing definitely rips. Yeah, and there's a really cool uh, girl 
probably 50s Chevy driving by. That was sweet to see. Um, now here's another big old Mopar. It's a 69 Monaco Ragtop. Right? Now these... Now the Monaco... Because I think it was the, the Polara that was on the full size. The Monaco was on the midsize. Like this is a B body underneath, I think. I could be wrong. It might be a C body. But I think these are B bodies. Um, however, you just don't see these. You know? It just, it's very, very cool. Like, I don't know the last time I actually saw one quite this early. Because there's one out at Greg's. Um, that is like a... Uh, <laughs> that one's like a 72 or 73. Um, but not a ragtop. And this one is just beautiful. Like... I absolutely love this uh, blue paint. It, it shines really well, actually. Um, and, you know, and I love how they color match the wheels, too. Just body lines are absolutely gorgeous. And, like, and if you can compare this to that uh, Fury over there, like, this doesn't have, like, the turn signals up here. It's got a slightly different hood and, you know, slightly different body lines. But overall, very, very cool. Um, here we have what's really cool. This is about 71, 72-ish. Um, possibly 1970. Fiber or not fiber Camaro, right? Now it's really cool. It's a Type LT, so I don't know my lingo when it comes to uh, these, but you know, non T-top car, which because T-tops got really popular in the well more the late seventies. Um, you know, absolutely love these uh, wheels. So the LT wheels, they look really good on there. To be honest, they're kind of similar to like a rally wheel that way, right? But uh, yeah. You know, very, very cool with the, uh, well, I don't know if this actually has proper cowl induction or not, but, uh, you know what, it has, like, that was an option on these, but this one's very sweet, and it has, like, the, uh, the RS chin spoiler type idea, but not the RS front bumper, however, it's a Type LT, so it makes sense. So, and judging by that it has these bumper rets, I'm gonna say this is about a 71 or 72, but I, again, don't know these as well as I'd like to. Here's another cool one. Now, actually, my buddy uh, Novataz, well, his name is Sean, but Novataz would absolutely love this one. To be honest, I, I find it really cool, too. This is a late 70s, like a 79, maybe even to up to 81 uh, Trans Am with the shaker on it. Very, very cool. It's a beater, but very nice. Like, and to be honest, love the T-tops on it and everything. And overall... Very nice, and like, and it's interesting. Some of this has been clear coated. You can tell, like this this trunk lid, absolutely clear coated. And what's really cool on these is these uh, finned tail lights. You know what? You don't see these very often anymore. Like they're starting to become more in vogue, and I absolutely love these tires. Like those those wheels and tire combination looks really good. Those are uh, oh, those are Cooper Cobras, which is what I have on my convertible actually. So my convertible Mustang, automatic. With the engine turn dash very cool now if we continue on here we'll find a okay so it's not a 73 <laughs> just have a 73 74 license plate on it but very cool i'm assuming that's when the current owner has owned it since but you know this one is for sale uh barracuda fastback it's probably a 69 68 they changed the body style in 1970 to what uh, most people know about the cuda and the Barracuda, because then there was actually uh, two different models, like, because you had the Cuda, which was your performance model, you had the Barracuda, which wasn't, right? But that is super cool. I absolutely love this grill design that they did um, back in, like I said, and they used this design from, I think it was like 67, right up to 69 for this front end, I think. Uh, and the thing is, what a lot of people don't know about these either is they started a life on the... Uh, the Valiant uh, platform. Well, like, it started out as a Valiant Barracuda, right? So it was kind of interesting. They, they weren't as good looking of cars in the early 60s because, like, the Barracuda came out in 64. Um, oh, this one's already sold. Look at that. There you go. It's sold. For, I mean, 2500 bucks, even though it's quite the restoration project, doesn't seem too bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, because you just, you don't see these anymore. And the Barracudas are just super, super cool. Um, and this was a 68. Yeah, so there you go. Um, yeah, it was a V8 car. Very, very cool. Let's check out what's rolling by right now. How cool is that? 
right? I, I dig what they did, kind of that hand brush, you know, sort of finish there. Very cool. You don't see them done like that very often. All right, here we have a cool old, that's either a Biscayne or an Impala. I won't know until I see the taillights. Um, ooh, 396 though. Big block car. Cool. You know what? You don't, again, don't really see these either. Uh, now these were kind of made very popular actually by the show Supernatural. Uh, Supernatural had a four-door version of one of these, but it is an Impala, okay. I just saw the dash. Um, yeah, and you can tell an Impala actually because they have the three taillights. The, uh, because the Impala and the Biscay were basically the same except for the Impala was up trimmed, had more options available, and it had the three taillights. And that's how you can tell, um, if you're in behind an Impala or if you were behind a Biscayne back in the day. So, very, very cool. Um, don't see these very often. And I apologize for uh, if this camera might be a little more shaky than usual. I'm using a new setup because I left my selfie stick at home. So I have this interesting little setup here. Uh, if you want, I will, uh, here. There's a phone number if anybody's interested. Ooh, now check out this old coupe here. This is a Ford. I don't know what year this is or what it's potentially emulating because I'm not sure if it's a metal or fiberglass body, but I'm not gonna tap on the body to find out. But very, very cool. I absolutely love when they're rotted like, oh, interesting, it's not a Ford. It's a Plymouth. Cool. So you don't see the Mopars very often. So like, and when this came out, cause again, Plymouth uh, came out in the 30s um, as Mopar's uh, sort of bargain brand because at the time, like Dodge and Chrysler, their vehicles cost too much, but during the Depression, they wanted to make a cheaper car, so they came up with Plymouth. And uh, yeah, this one's obviously way customized from when it was originally because, you know, it probably has a V8 in it now. It's been lowered. Um, you know what? And it's... That's a bit of a chop too. Looks really, really good. I love these. Well, there you go. I did not leave empty handed from the swap meet because I picked up these sweet uh, um, fog lights and it actually does have, comes with a little switch too. So these will actually go in the Civic, um, you know, 78 Civic because they've got that really cool amber look and everything. They're a proper fog light, not like the fog lights that they sell now that are just LEDs and awful. Like they're, Honestly, like when you have those bright lights, they're horrible with fog. So yeah, like, you know, I'm here actually with uh, Roy Marco. Um, he's got some stuff still around. Um, and yeah, so far so good. Yeah, so I'm back in the pavilion actually, and I uh, came across this uh, Mustang table here. These guys actually, if you see them right here, um, very knowledgeable on Mustang stuff. If uh, you need anything, you know, give them a call. Um, yeah, because actually I just bought a couple of stickers, which you'll see later on in the video. Um, but just a bunch of cool stuff, to be honest. Like even one of these uh, cool, like those are the uh, the windshield washer reservoir bags. Now you, you don't see those anymore. Like uh, some people will replace them, but if you want OEM, that's the kind of style you'd have back in the 60s. You know, and cool the uh, air cleaner and stuff like that. And uh, you know, like Ford 9 inch stuff. Oh, very neat. Now if we go along, like you'll see some interesting badges and stuff like that too, which, uh, you know, galaxy badges and stuff like that. It's very neat of the stuff that you can find actually here at the swap meets, to be honest. You know, a bunch of old mirrors and whatever else. Like there's just a bunch of stuff that you never know what you might need or what you might want. Right? Like, and you always want to actually look through, you know, stuff like this just to see what all they have. Because you never know, you might find what you need or just something you might want. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, overall, pretty cool. And, like, going through, and you know, like, you'll see some newer parts and whatever else in here, too. But then you'll see a lot of used stuff. Like, for example, you know, you can see this old S10 tailgate here. Um, just a bunch of you know stuff like that and you know that, that, that that's what's cool about swap meets you never know what you're gonna find and like sometimes you can find a gem 
that people don't know what they have or just, uh, you know, sometimes it's very expensive. It just depends. You know, like cool the uh, Chevy AM radio from, looks like the 50s. Honestly, very cool. And even these old, uh, cause that's, that's like Tri-5. Same as that. You know, Chevy. Pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Around. Um, yeah, we'll continue on here. You know, like for example, in here you have a bunch of like Mopar stuff. Like for example, you know, they have a 426 Max Wedge, which is uh, built, which is cool. Um, and then they also have a stroked out 400 that they're not here. Um, but it's very cool. Like you can see these old Plymouth uh, hubcaps, reflectors, and whatever else. It's just neat, and you know, you'll see everything from like, for example, see that's a mirror for a Bull 5 to 10 Grand Cherokee. And you know, modern stuff, old stuff, it just depends. You know, and the bigger swap meets are the ones that are, um, I enjoy the most. This is a little smaller one, but you know, it's really fun. It's a lot of fun too. Like, you know, you have these four speed, uh, four trannies, for example. And you know, like even, Nine inch ring gear with a 350 ratio and stuff like that. It's just it's it's neat, you know. And like this is stuff that like that I don't need or anything like that, but it's cool. And you know, in the future, I'll definitely be probably looking for some of this stuff. And like for example, you know, a 4500 stall uh, converter for an AOD. <laughs> you know, like it's pretty serious stuff. No nine inch housings for uh, Torinos, carburetors, all this different stuff. It's just very neat. Like, and even, that looks like a Mach 1 scoop, too. Very cool. Like, 69, 70. But yeah, like, and even, like here, for example, that is a, a 68 Mustang 394 speed, right? Here we have a small block 4 speed, which they are different. Uh, big block and small blocks, they did have a little different top loaders on them. This is very neat, right? You know, I absolutely love swap meets like this. And, uh, you know, like, there's, uh, for example, shocks and whatever else, and mirrors, and whatever else. It's just very neat. Um, yeah, let's see. We're moving on. No Corvette sold. They're white, though, that one, and trouble, guys. Well, that's good for you. Then they come back. You know, and like, sorry, I wasn't talking there for a minute. Um, just kind of just looking and seeing. And like, for example, something else that's very serious. Take a look at this. That is a 566 gear for a nine inch for only a hundred dollars. But it, it, it's gonna be specialized because the one thing is finding somebody that wants a 566 gear, that's difficult. But it's only a hundred bucks. You know, just cause it's, that's definitely not, um, that's a, that's a racing rear end. It's not very straightable with that. But you know, like, you'll just see a bunch of stuff and like, there's stuff all over. That is very neat, you know. We're later on in the day and, uh, you know, like, even, you know, four dogfish hubcaps and stuff like that, old badges and whatever else. Again, you never know what you're gonna find. I tell them, I'd sooner have to leave See now, because even the you know, Dodge Tradesman badges and stuff like that too. See, that's cool. You know, like old mirrors and you know, you even got stuff like this, right? All these little Hot Wheels cars and whatever else in here. It's very cool. You've got old Chilton's manuals. Which let's see, do they have one that I want? Doesn't look like it. So, not yet, anyways. Because, yeah, you know, I'm always looking for stuff for like uh, Hondas and whatever else, and even for the Fords. Um, especially the old Chilton's Spanish, which is cool. Even like, check out this set here. This is really neat. With the Harley Davidson, uh, Royal Jones, whatever else. Like, that's a sink, for example. Like, that's just super cool. Artwork. You know, a bunch of different stuff around. Like, you never know what you may find. Like, and even... These are pretty unique, too, because you see 
Uh, 409, 348 were like the only ones that had uh, the style of valve cover. They're kind of weird looking, but honestly, very cool. And they only made them for a few years, the 348, 409, like late 50s and the early 60s. Very, very neat to see those. You know? And yeah. Let's see, what else cool can I find? You know, like it even have some really cool artwork or whatever else. You know? That, like, and stuff like this is really cool. Um, these banners and whatnot. Um, let's see, like, you got a bunch of owner's manuals and whatever else. Which, actually, I might go look through these and see what I can find. You know, and actually, like, all of these are, like, a bunch of shop manuals or whatever else. You know, they got a bunch of Chryslers. Uh, Dodge, Plymouth, and Chrysler parts, 64 through 72. And just... These are all full of, like, stuff like that, which is really cool to see. You know, maybe I'll find one for my Fox Bodies. We'll see. All right, so check this out. I just bought it. This, I, I, I'm done buying now. You know, like, a bunch of Honda Civic stuff. And, you know, this is, like, sales literature. And then I found sales literature for an 86 Mustang, you know, from, like, the dealership. So, yeah. Um, you know, overall, pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, that, that'll about do it for this video. I uh, hope you guys did enjoy. If you didn't know, please like the video, comment anything you want to see down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as well if you want to contact me, you can at Katarina's Dr. Raj on Instagram or Katarina's Garage on Facebook. As well, follow me on TikTok at Katarina's Dr. Raj as well. I uh, hope you're staying safe during COVID-19. Good luck for what we're working on, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye! Pikachu!